Dare to be united. I'm your host, Margaret Vossen, the Illinois FFA State Reporter. Before we begin, I have a couple of questions I want us all to think about. Number one, what do Alaska, Hawaii, and New Hampshire all have in common? They're all coastlines. They're all states. Corn is grown in all three places. While all answers are correct, what I recognize is that they're all united under one nation. Now, let's go into the second question. What do carrots, cauliflower, and cucumbers all have in common? They all start with C. They're all vegetables. And some even said they're good with ranch. Great answers. And there's probably some in there that are similar to yours. What I recognize is that they're all united under one food group. Now, let's segue into our third and final question. What do McDonald's, snow, and a trash can all have in common? They're all found in the Midwest. They all can be yellow, and they all can be found outside. Now, I don't know about you all, but when I first heard that question, I had no idea how to answer. It took the help of members to figure out what connected those three things. It taught me that even the wildest of things can unite us and create a connection. To truly be great leaders, not only do we have to be ourselves, optimistic, resilient, and focused, but we must also be united under one goal to truly reach our potential and lay our hands flat on the table. Once your hand is flat, tuck your middle finger under the rest of your hand. Once you have done that, without using any outside help, keep your middle knuckle flush to the surface and try to lift up your fourth finger. Now, try to lift up all your fingers. If you kept your knuckle flush to the surface, you would have found that it is impossible to lift up your fourth finger under those conditions. This just goes to show that if just one member of the team is down for the count, the whole team will have a hard time prospering under one goal. As we think about what we just did, let's reflect on this question. How will you use your individuality to unite others from now on? In the FFA and life itself, we will be part of many teams, whether it be sports teams, school projects, or coworkers in the workplace. Just like those scraps of paper, we're all unique individuals with different skills and abilities. The thing that unites us all is our passion for the agricultural industry and our drive to grow as individuals. If we stay true to ourselves, optimistic, resilient, and focused, we can truly unite as one team. Focus on what ties us together and we will never fall apart. Hey guys, my name is Molly Schempf, serving as your Illinois FFA State Vice President. Let's get started. First, I'd like to introduce to you a few people who have incredible strengths. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of strength that can lift a car like Mr. Incredible. I am talking about three people who discovered their unique strengths and use them to positively influence others. First, meet the Sherpas of Nepal. The Sherpas lead people up the tallest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. They can do this because researchers recently discovered that 87% of them have a specific gene that allows them to breathe with 40% less oxygen.
The Sherpa's strength was being able to breathe with 40% less oxygen than the average human. They use their strength to positively influence others by giving climbers the experience of a lifetime. Next, allow me to introduce to you Miss Darcy Lynn Farmer. At just 12 years old, this American ventriloquist and singer won season 12 of the NBC hit show, America's Got Talent. She could have competed as a singer, but then she was able to sing without using your lips. Darcy Lynn's strength was her incredible voice. She used that to positively influence others by entertaining audiences of all ages. Hello everyone, Illinois FFA State Treasurer Emma Kuntz here. I'm incredibly excited to spend some time with you today. All right, to start out, I know that we're all incredibly tired of being on Zoom or in a classroom all day. So I'm gonna have to ask you to stand up. Now that we're all standing up, let's get some stretches in to start us off. Let's take our right arm, pass it over our bodies and pull it in with our left. On my count, one, two, three, four, five. Shake it out really well. And let's do the same with our left arm. Over our bodies, pull in with our right. One, two, three, four, five. And shake it out. Awesome. This is where the real work comes in. We're gonna do a set of 10 jumping jacks. On my count, on three, we'll start. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Awesome, you guys are doing so well keeping up with me. Now we have some more work to do. We're gonna do a set of five one-legged jumping jacks. Let's bring our knees up and get ready to do our one-legged jumping jacks. On my count again. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, and five. Awesome, you guys are doing so well. Now that we've got those done, you guys can sit back down. When we did the jacks, it was so much easier to do the regular jumping jacks than the one-legged. Why is that? It's because it's the way that we normally do it. We've practiced doing that way since we were little. So what happens if we keep doing one-legged jumping jacks? If we keep putting in the effort to achieve great results even with difficult conditions. We're being resilient. My definition of resilience is the effort we put in to achieve great results, even with difficult conditions. If we kept doing one-legged jumping jacks over and over again, our balance would get better. Our muscles in our leg would get stronger. If we kept overcoming obstacles throughout our life, we would be able to achieve great things. One outstanding example of resiliency is Henry Ford. Ford went broke five different times and failed with multiple companies before founding the successful Ford Motors Company. He was on call at Edison Electric 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but still managed to develop gasoline powered engines that resulted in the creation of an assembly line that we still use today. Henry Ford didn't let setbacks like a busy work life or going broke, stop him. He kept going and achieved his goals, which ended up in him being one of the 10 richest men in history. But Henry Ford is just a person like me and you. Let's take 30 seconds to answer this question. Who is the most resilient person you know? For me, this person is my mom. Now that you have your answer, let's take another 30 seconds to answer this question. My mom 
mom is driven, understanding, and committed to her goals. By using those traits, I can accomplish mine. Let's take another 30 seconds to answer this question. We can be successful only if we keep overcoming our challenges. By being resilient, we can do this. We can make the best of any situation we're put in. Hello everybody, we really gotta focus on this one. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We all have distractions. And even though we can't eliminate all of those distractions, if we know what they are, we can better manage them. So common distractions, I have some examples for. We are in a Zoom meeting. It is class, we are learning, and we are having a great time. And then it happens. Our phone buzzes. And we know it's a Snapchat. We know that if we move our hands a little to the right, or a little to the left, we'll be out of the frame and we can answer our Snapchat. Our teacher will have no idea. Little side note, they have an idea. Another distraction, we pay $9 for a movie. $9 for one movie. And instead of watching our $9 movie, we instead are listening to the couple to our left have an entire conversation. We are so distracted by this couple. Another distraction, we had the worst day at work, the worst day at school, or the absolute worst game of our entire life. All we want to do is go home and sit in the dark in silence. And as soon as we flip that switch, as soon as we shut that door, it's like our family moves the kitchen table right outside of our door. They are talking as loud as they possibly can. And instead of focusing on our silence and our thoughts, we are focusing on the conversations they are screaming outside of our doors. We all experience this at one point or another. It gets pretty hard to manage all of those distractions. But I dare you to think about this reflection question. What are your distractions in your life that prevent you from accomplishing your goals? I know for me, when I am working in Springfield, recording a video or writing a newsletter, I am paying so much attention. And then I check my phone once. I see a Snapchat story and my friends are out getting ice cream. Instead of focusing on my work like I should be, I am thinking about not having an ice cream cone in my hand. This year, it's gonna be hard to focus. This year, we're gonna get distracted. If we know what those distractions are, we can manage them. We can better focus.